This suit tracks my body's every move, but not in a creepy way, in a computery way. This is me in a computer simulation of, uh, of me. You get it. If you watch the behind the scenes videos for most big budget movies or TV shows, you'll see how Hollywood does motion tracking with a huge studio and expensive cameras and hardware. But what if this suit could replace all of that? Why do this? Well, the more accessible and affordable creative tools get, the more people can use them to create cool things. And more importantly, they find new ways to use them that we just can't predict. In all the TV shows, and all the video games that we play, there's a component of motion capture. The experience of using the Rococo system is very simple. Put on a suit, turn on your computer, start recording. The world is digitizing, and I think the last frontier is, in many ways, human motion. Are you ready to jump into a new reality? It's a brave new world out here. This is Hard Reset, a series about rebuilding our world from scratch. We came to Copenhagen, Denmark, where Legos are from, to meet the folks at Rococo, a company that makes smart suits. This is Jacob. Um, how do you pronounce your last name? That's a tricky one. Well, first time I checked into Disney's headquarters, they autocorrected my last name to balls everywhere. <laughs> how does that even... Come on, Disney. So yeah, don't make that mistake. Noted. Anyway, meet Jacob Belslev. He's one of the founders of Rococo and has a magnificent chair. So Rococo is a company that works on digitizing human motion. Basically, we have a range of software and AI and hardware tools that is used to capture and edit and analyze human motion. We have some of the biggest companies in the world, but our sort of heart lies with those that never had access to these tools before, that do because of us. So we try to build our tools so that you can use them anywhere, you can operate them yourself, and they cost a fraction of these high-end tools that, that people are used to. The idea for Rococo started with something that I can certainly relate to. Jacob didn't want to do his homework. Um, so at the film school in Denmark, you have to do a fiction project, a documentary project, and an animation project. So I was like dreading um, animation, actually. I just thought of animation as this like painful process where you had to like write the script, then do like a storyboard, then an animatic, and then you got like one shot at making the animation right. And if you didn't do it right, you, you basically couldn't redo it. You were just stuck with whatever you made. So Jacob looked for a way to make animating more like filmmaking or theater, which is what he actually did. I met this guy, he said, if we can get actors inside of motion capture suits and then transfer the motions in real time onto animated characters, and then if we can show that in front of a live audience, we can make like living, real-time animated movies. The result was this play, a live cartoon version of The Princess and the Frog. Everything was happening in the moment, being tailored to the specific audience that was there that night. So every show was different. That was the beginning of Rococo, because Jacob and his team set about to make a simpler device for capturing body movements. The idea here is that all these IMUs and accelerometers are now small enough to be sewn into our clothes. This works especially well if you like to wear body-hugging black bodysuits, like me. This is Rokoko's headquarters. This is where we built and we design all our products. What you see here is illustration of how we assemble the suits, how they should actually place the cables so they get them right. Our gloves consist of seven sensors, one in each finger. And here in the back you have a hub, and then you have your hub on the back, which then connects all the sensors to the Wi-Fi. So this is the inside of a sensor from the suit. And of course, there's a lot of components which needs to work, and there's a lot of code which needs to run on it, and these guys are making that happen. The data from these sensors is compatible with professional animation software, which lets you map your movements to any 3D character you want to animate. But it also works with game engines like Unreal. This means Rococo suits can be used to animate in real time. You can even use your phone to track your face, which can be mapped to a 3D model as well. And Rococo isn't the only company making hardware like this. There are several other companies creating wearable tracking systems. This motion sensing hardware tends to rely on IMUs, or inertial measurement units, a technology that has gotten super affordable as it found its way into our phones, VR headsets, and game controllers. 
Besides just being more affordable, using small IMUs to track movement like this has a few big advantages over traditional motion capture techniques. With traditional technologies, the cameras always need to be able to see the actors. So if they cross in front of each other, it could cause problems. But with IMUs, there's no camera, so the actors can be tracked even if they go behind or inside something that would block a tracking camera. The disadvantage of using IMUs is drift. Over time, the computer's understanding of where you are in space might drift off target. But now, Rococo is working on a new technology to solve that. What this will do is make a magnetic field so we can track absolute position on the gloves when the coil is in the space. So what's it like to be captured in 3D? I met up with Sam from Rococo to try out the smart suit with a professional, but I forgot to bring my red hat. I think it's important that we do try to democratize these tools because, you know, it benefits us all in that the art that's being created, it's been so out of reach for so long just because it's been so expensive and complicated. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure we were even tracking his motion at this point. Anyway. Putting on and calibrating the smart suit is really very easy. I mean, how are you feeling? Honestly, it's not bad. It's not bad. Feeling good? Skin into Tron. Feeling like a cyber ninja? So here, let's do one. And we call our calibration a straight pose. Okay. Um, so you just, yep, stand with your hands at your side. And the motion tracking is very comprehensive, including your fingers and face. So you're giving it sort of a neutral reference of like, this is my arms down, so that when I move it 90 degrees in this direction, it knows to move my arm. Exactly. Why don't you tell me what you want me to do on this recording? Okay, well, I want to hit record and just tell you cool. live. So, you know, I don't know, give us some like stretching, you know? It's either dancing or karate. Do you have any dance moves? I could, I, I, I only know like one karate kick, which is that. <laughs> Slow I mean, motion looks, That looks pretty good. Mapping the animation to a 3D character takes some work. But there are quite a few free online tools for rigging up an armature to your character. You might need to spend some time tweaking and playing around to get the result you want. But what comes out of the software is pretty astounding. If you're going to make a virtual version of yourself, don't drop them into an infinite void. It's, it's incredibly disconcerting. Why have I done this to myself? <sighs> we'll make you a knight too. Okay, so this is creating like a whole virtual production thing. We've got this super detailed environment in here. Holy cats. Turn on the mocap. Wow, that is incredible. Yep, oh my God, there's some leaves. I forget if I had a... Ow a sword in this one. Oh. I don't think that I do. I know. But the cape is amazing. The cape is incredible. It's so great to get that feedback. I thinking I might need a cape in real life. Why did they go away? They're swishy, a little flare. Take a nap. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's just a flesh wound. And it looks pretty good. It looks great. <laughs> so good, it's the best death scene I've ever done. Oh. The main use for this right now isn't just movies. Actually, a lot of the folks who use Rococo are motion artists and VTubers, or virtual YouTubers. But this is like a live, real-time mapping of me to this 3D character. Yes. That's pretty dope. And it looks amazing. It does. I like her pants. For VTubers, the suit and face tracking hardware give them a quick way to capture their performances and share them with their audiences. We see lots of applications of real-time motion capture being used. You are controlling a digital double live in real time and streaming and playing games like a normal YouTuber. Not too long ago, this would have required a whole team of technicians and engineers, but now it can be done at home by just a single person. Every day we see these creations that are just something you would never in your wildest imagination have, have thought would, would be created. Really original idea created in a very specific way by people that would never have been funded because it's sort of their own story that they need to tell. And it's such, such a sort of catharsis for them to like get through and tell that story in that way. Blender is free. Unreal Engine is free. Like you can make all of this stuff on your home computer now as a 13 year old and put it on YouTube. You have distribution. You can get millions of views on it. The stories that creators like that are willing to tell are so much more different than what you'll see from a mainstream film. Of course, the suit itself is not cheap. It's a tool for professionals, and so it's priced like one. 
But if you don't want to spring for this kind of hardware, the folks at Rococo are also looking at using the camera in your phone or computer for motion capture. So we have invested throughout the last many years in building some really good vision tools where you just use video, extract the motion from that. So we have a two camera solution coming for our AI motion capture system. So you can use your phone and your webcam at the same time to get even higher quality data. So picture a scenario where this technology is even more affordable and ubiquitous. What doors does this open for new creators to tell stories? Stories we'd never hear if the only people who can afford to tell them are huge corporations. We're trying to help people who are just trying to get the most out of these tools, and usually that ends up meaning using the tools in ways that the creators didn't expect them to. Right. I think eventually it'll be completely sort of ambient part of, of digital behavior where it's just like, of course I'm gonna track myself for this thing I'm doing. But I think it's going to be completely easy to incorporate into all kinds of experiences. The more we democratize access to creative tools, the more amazing things they're used for. Think about the printing press or video cameras. History has shown again and again that artistic expression thrives as access to creative tools is expanded. Rococo is just one part of this story. As computers have gotten more affordable and access to software and AI has gotten near ubiquitous, we've seen people defy our expectations about what can even be created. Of course, digital tools aren't everything. We shouldn't lose our appreciation for the sincerity and charm of our high school plays with their homemade sets. But tools like this can enable more moments of wonder and creativity that were simply never possible before. The tech should be in the background, and the storytelling and the experiences and the interactions and the feelings should be at the forefront. Should just be, you don't even think about it. You just grab your whatever it is, and you just go ahead and do it. Now the real question is what will you create? I'll be Master Chief. All right. You be cyberpunk. Master Chief, you have to come and help me. <sighs> you know, dun 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 dun, right. dun 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 dun. We're on a, apparently we're on a giant circle ship. Yeah, then I it gets know. to acting, which is. It's not my thing. Yeah, it's not, yeah, we're not. There's yeah, not yeah, enough yeah. special effects in the world. Yeah.